we're here today, and uh, I'm Brian, I'm, and I'm Kyle for Short Circuit Brewers, and today we are going to take this great big 30-gallon Blickman and knock a bunch of holes in it because we need to get that in here. So this is going to be kind of a how-to video on doing that, so sit back, grab a beer, and watch as we drill some holes in a real expensive kettle. <laughs> So we'll put a uh, mark in here to guide our bit. <clears throat> no longer water tight. Yeah. There's a hole in your kettle. Yeah. and tight fit. Stainless steel, you want to try to go as slow as you possibly can, but still cut because it will burn up your drill bit in a heartbeat. So, the slower you can go and still cut, the better off you'll be. Much better. Smoother holes, less wear and tear on your drill bit. Employ something, a new toy that I got. Um, it is a conduit, or a, I'm sorry, a chassis punch that uh, Cal recommends using on uh, electricbrewery.com. Um, as you can see there, it's uh, basically this goes on the inside of the kettle, this goes on the outside, crank this bolt down, and then it punches a hole through the kettle that's nice and burr free and everything. So we'll drill a pilot hole that this uh, shaft will fit into, and we'll be back in a second. All right, so got a hole enlarged to be able to fit the shaft of the punch through. I'm going to go on the inside of the kettle and uh, put the actual punch part in. Run it down so that it is tied up against the kettle wall. Like so. And then take our crescent wrench and start cranking on this. This is the first time I've used it on video, so here we go. And that is pretty nice. Nice hole. Awesome. It's real good. All right, so you might be asking why we put a hole down there. Um, Tri-clamp fitting on the inside. Voila, Whirlpool port. So he's going to be doing some whirlpooling in his kettles there. Should work nicely. Got the barb from uh, the hose barb and attachment from uh, Bobby in New Jersey. Brewhardware.com. All right, on to the next one. And the great tri-clamp fittings are from Stainless Brewing. You can see those very low profile, very, very low profile uh, tri-clamp fittings. Stuff hanging off the edge. Yep. 
All right, so Kyle's doing a Herm setup just like mine. So we will be putting this Herm's coil into his hot liquor tank so he can do a recirculation. So we'll start putting the holes in there for that and uh, show you what that looks like. That coil is purchased from Stainless Brewing. And that's what the, the $100 includes the coiling and then the two bends yeah. on the end. We'll try to throw up some links. you what it looks like uh, whenever the punch pierces through the inside of the kettle. Pretty uh, pretty freaking cool. Must no fuss. One more turn and we'll have it Okay, so we're at the box portion now. Um, what I've got is we've got a, a four hole electrical box for like electrical outside. Uh, it's actually a five hole, we cut, the, we cut the fifth hole larger in the back. But, uh, so it's a five hole uh, conduit box. You can, get, you can get ones that have three holes in them, but they only had these available today when we got it. So we cut a two and a quarter inch hole in the back and that's where the element will actually uh, come through at it'll sit through there on the other side like so um, to mount it we actually got a blank cover and drilled a inch and a quarter hole in the front of it and then what I've done is uh, drilled holes in the back of the box and tapped it so that the screws that came with the cover will actually screw into the back of the box so this will sit like so, on the back of the box. The element will go through the inside as such. Um, when we screw it into the kettle, we get it all secured, we'll put some silicone around the inside. Uh, on top of that, we're also going to take and uh, do some JB weld around the outside of here just to secure everything and make sure it's a nice, tight, secure fit. And then we'll also silicone it as well. This one has already been JB welded, as you can see, it's kind of oozing around the inside there. Um, and then we've also got, um, for the termination of the wire into the box itself, we've got this uh, piece here. And basically what this does, this actually screws into the port and then the wire goes through and you can cinch everything down and tighten it down. So that is where we are with that so far. And then we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, so we got all the covers on and got the plugs on the elements. Pretty stock standard stuff. Strip the wire, put the uh, two hots to either the X or Y and the ground obviously goes to the ground. So stock standard electrical stuff there. Uh, now I'm gonna put, put the um, element up to the cord. Uh, we'll strip the wires back. Uh, incidentally, we are using 10-gauge um, wire, which will handle the amperage that we need for the boil kettle element. Actually, yeah, this is a hot liquor tank. I guess some people call it the hot liquor ton. I'm not sure what's the proper name of it, but it heats the freaking hot water for the mash. Eyelet connectors on. See the wonderful mess we've got going on here. Nice tool, ratcheting crimper. 
Done. All right, while he's crimping those down, we're going to take a look at the, uh, we got the boil kettle done and we're giving it a wet test. Um, so you can see the element there. It's working. Uh, we just plugged it into his control panel. Um, and we're reading out right now at about 156 degrees and 100 uh, percent on that element. So uh, we got about 18, I think 18 gallons in this. Yeah, 18 gallons in that one. Uh, everything's looking good. We had to tighten up uh, the recirculation port, but other than that. Everything looks to be watertight, and uh, the 45 degree or 4500 watt element is handling the uh, volume of water pretty good. So we're checking on him. Checking on Brian. Back to me. <laughs> Rocket. All right, so uh, got the two hot legs of the 220 volt circuit coming out of the plug up into the box all up in that yep two hot two hots you know one going to each side of the element it's a 220 volt element then of course we got the ground to the box the box is actually grounded uh with through the element and everything there's a stainless steel washer and everything that sits up against that plus the everything is grounded basically so we'll put the watertight cover on and this one will be ready for a wet test so only thing left now is uh, the panel. So that just got painted the other day. Looks pretty freaking sweet. And uh, we'll have to wire it up, but that is another day. This is taking long enough as it is. So, <laughs> Well, um, build day was a success. Doing a wet test on the hot liquor tank now. Filling up the water down here. It's got probably 20 gallons or more in it. Doing a boil, yeah, go ahead and turn it off. Doing a boil test on the uh, boil kettle. I don't know about you, man, but I think uh, we did it. I think we Cheers. did it. Too. Cheers, guys. It's nice to be done. <laughs> Holy hell. Long time a coming. Left. A little bit left. A little bit. Gotta little get bit. that panel done. Panel done. Lots of wiring, lots of spaghetti. So, yeah, I think this uh, 174 will be coming to a boil soon. Not too bad. That'll be a little bit of a long brew day for you with the 4500 watt element. I'll make it work. Exactly. It's it's electric. You can walk away and come back, so not a big deal. All right, guys. See ya. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.